Hi, good afternoon, uh, Chiki, Josiah, and all the Market Master awardees. Uh, congratulations to everyone and to everyone who's actually here in the broadcast. Okay, I'll make it uh, short and sweet. If you met Michael Tan in a working environment for the first time, I'm pretty sure that you can already tell how focused and well composed he is as a leader. For a person who is a director of several companies of LT Group, he manages his time efficiently and sometimes even goes out of his way to catch up and do checkpoints with his management team. I can still remember one of my first projects with him at that time. And let's just say it could be classified as a high risk and high return project. I was highly strong about the whole situation, but after just one discussion with Michael, I managed to keep up my head up while being in a receptive frame of mind. He made sure that I understood the assignment and everything was crystal clear from all possible benefits, downsides, and upsides of the project. To me, that's what every good mentor possesses. The ability to empower a person by making them see another point of view or perspective, which is very important in all the good mentors. Whether it's positive or negative, Michael will give you a 360 degree scope of all possibilities that your task entails, giving you the freedom to explore every single one under your watch. So despite all the freedom, he was able to really mentor me in terms of the watch out and the pitfalls of the project that I'm doing and handling. The best thing about it is he would always make you feel it's all right to fail as long as you learn from each mistake. So this is not a normal corporate uh, boss um, copy. Eh? You will not hear that from all the corporate bosses. Michael is the one who, one of the most unselfish leaders I've known. He gave me the luxury of fulfilling a larger role and exposing me to various uh, operations that needed my presence and expertise. He always sees both my strengths and my weaknesses and immediately points them out while providing solutions on how I can leverage on my strength. I will not forget my presentation with Calidad Pascual in Creamy Delight Yogurt. Michael was very supportive and optimistic about our ideas and as a result, we were chosen as the ideal partner in the region. To me, it was a proof that leaders with great confidence can also be contagious because it drives commitment to the entire team. There was one time where we gave me the opportunity to spearhead the growth and new business. And as usual, Michael was very composed when I was the complete opposite. He noticed how, how nervous I was while reading my notes very rapidly. Alam nyo ba yung parang nagsascan ka lang ng notes kaso hindi mo talaga nababasa? Yun. But then he just stopped me and said, relax. And he smiled. Uh, Mike, I don't think you remember it. But nasa plane tayo nun eh. Nasa plane. Okay. Only one word from Michael saying that it's going to be okay was all I needed to say. Stay relaxed and focused. That's his signature touch. It never fails to comfort and motivate his team. And even after we're, we're no longer boss, Michael was no longer my boss, uh, I think, last year. Uh, we were still in touch, and he was the one who actually sent me uh, an antigen test kit. <laughs> when During that time, it was really very difficult to, to uh, get test kits, right? So he was really, uh, really a good friend and a um, former boss to me. But I guess the most important lesson I learned from Michael is the ability to keep an eye for business opportunities. The presence of mind to seize opportunities while being aware of the risk and gains of the company. Great leaders like him are visionary and inspirational, and people gravitate towards them. Michael has both qualities plus the benefit of being practical. This is the reason why until now, I focus on the approach more than the intention. Because strategies, no matter how good they are, will fail in bad execution. To one of the best mentors I have great honor working with, Patron, muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Mr. Michael Tan.
Thank you for uh, having me. Um, a very uh, pleasant afternoon to everyone. I'm truly delighted to be here, accepting and sharing this important recognition with other three extraordinary mentors, uh, Baki Bakiran of Unilab, Jeffrey Goh of GSK Consumer Healthcare, Joy Isla of Unilever. Uh, congr so congratulations, uh, Baki, Jeffrey, and Joy. To Mansfield Market Masters Award founders, Josiah Go and Chiki Escorel Go, thank you for the recognition, and more importantly, for establishing this award. This is quite a unique and remarkable award that invites us to reflect upon the people who have walked alongside us in our journeys and left us with indelible lessons. Thank you for fostering this profound act of remembering and gratitude among the next generation of marketeers. And thank you for allowing me to honor the, the honor to be part of it. I accept this award with deep appreciation and great humility. I also share this award with my team at Asia Brewery with, with whom it would not be possible. No? Uh, allow me also to congratulate Mansfield on reaching your 31st year. What an incredible milestone. Let me also recognize and thank Joseph Chai Cruel, one of the first ever recipients of Mansfield's Young Master Markets Award, who nominated me for this award. Chai was an awardee and was recognized for his exemplary talent as brand manager. We were fortunate to have him in Asia Brewery as Vice President of Business Development and International Business, where Chai helped us develop new international partnerships and lead new product categories that emerged as winners in their respective markets, such as Vita Milk, Soy Milk, and Cobra Energy Drink. Chai, thank you for remembering me and your time at Asia Brewery. I'm humbled and honored to be re regarded as someone who somehow has helped you in your path and your, and your nomination is made even more special, seeing you now doing so well and sharing your marketing knowledge. So with Chai nominating me, I find it fitting to begin my remarks with a story about a product we worked on together and share the key lessons I have learned from that experience. It is a story of how a crisis can push us to break barriers and open new possibilities. If we pay attention and look closely, it is also a story of a different kind of mentorship. It is a story of how failures can be our mentors, teaching us new ways of operating in the world and guiding us to new grounds. This story begins in mid 2000 and our team at Asia Brewery then finding ourselves struggling in the beer sector. We weren't doing well in the market and we were really ha having a hard time fighting the competition. And you know where the struggle became really evident? In our production lines. We were accumulating excess capacity in our bottling lines that was built for beer, which failed to gain traction. So suddenly we have this massive capacity that was staring us in the face and we have to solve this problem as quickly as possible. The answer to the problem, it seems at the time, was quite simple. We just needed a way to find and utilize our adult assets. assets. After all, two things were going for us. One is that these bottling lines could actually fill products and beverages other than beer. The other one is that these bottling lines are what you call RGB, or returnable glass bottle lines. So it can handle glass containers. And that is an important attribute. And you will learn later why in the story. With these two elements, the first thing that came into my mind was to come out with the soft drinks because carbonated soft drinks dominate the local market when it comes to consumption of non-alcoholic drinks. At the time, it generates sales equivalent to 600 million cases a year and valued over 50 billion pesos. We had also long wanted a soft drinks line since it is perceived to have synergies between soft drinks and beer. And it appeared you know, it appeared at this time that it was the right time to launch one. So we came out with Virgin Cola, which at the time was the fourth or fifth cola in the market. 
we experienced initial success, but competition turned out to be tough in a very crowded market. At this time, I received an invitation from an international liquor company to visit Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam to check out a facility there for sale. So I went to Vietnam and you know, every time I'm abroad, it had been my habit to see what other countries are doing and scout local ideas worth exploring. And in one of these visits, I noticed a unique product, which is an energy drink in RGB format. I saw two players there. One is called a local brand called Number One, and the other one, an international brand made by Pepsi called Sting. I tasted the product and it had a, and I had an aha moment and knew we were into something. When I went back to Manila, we did the math and I asked our NPD or new product development team to come out with something similar. And that was how Cobra was born. Finally, we got a winning formula. Cobra from its initial launch to the present is now the country's number one energy drink. So how did we do it? We bypassed two earlier generations of energy drinks. Generation one are drinks like Lipovitan and Red Bull in one-way glass, bo glass bottles at 30 pesos. Generation two are drinks in powder form like Extra Joss at five pesos per sachet, which requires mixing with water and therefore creating an extra step for the consumer in addition to providing insufficient energy boost because they use artificial sweetener. We also positioned Cobra as a notch above soft drinks. It got the same refreshing taste as carbonated soft drinks, but with more functionality, like added vitamin B, taurine, ginseng, inositol. We also launched it at a premium to soft drinks at 10 pesos, Coke being sold at 8 pesos, Pepsi at 7, and RC Cola at 5. But compared to Gen 1, we, we were 60% cheaper no? with Gen 1 drinks. We also eliminate, eliminated the inconvenience of having to mix it with water by making it ready to drink or RTD. In short, we improved on the limitations of Gen 1 and Gen 2 energy drinks and added functionalities to the soft drinks without losing its refreshing quality taste quality, thereby creating spe a specially unique product containing not only energy, but thirst quencher and other functionalities. Now we even improve it with an immune booster or what we call Immunity Plus with vitamin D and zinc. Demand picked up tremendously to the point that our existing beer lines were not enough and the margins were far better than soft drinks. So at the time, we de-emphasized Virgin and allocated all the capacity to Cobra. So our share of throat, a term we use in the, in the beverage industry to measure market share, included not only the markets of energy drink, but also for soft drinks. And that continues to be the case to the present. So for the past, past 14 to 15 years, Cobra remains a market leader. More importantly, it helps secure Asia Brewery's survival. So what can we learn from this experience? I think the first lesson we learned is we need to be like a bamboo not, and not an oak. There's a Japanese proverb that says, the bamboo that bends is stronger than the oak that resists. Our experiences taught us that our, process, our processes, our thinking, and our people, and our systems need to be flexible and adaptable to changing circumstances at all times. Things can change rapidly and you will need to be nimble and agile, not only just to survive, but to thrive. We pivoted in the mid 2000s, not once, but twice in response to our failures. And we learned that when we give ourselves permission to change direction, when things go wrong or do not deliver the outcome that we wanted, we allow failures to be transformed into a gift where we can harvest the learnings, which in our case, paved the way for Cobra, one of our most successful products. The second lesson emanates from a place of deeper reflection. It's not something that was obvious when the crisis was unfolding. And that is, 
there's a distinction between mastery and success. When we aim, when we aim for success, we usually have a vision of an end point, like arriving at a specific imagined place, a peak point. Mastery is not the same as success. Mastery is not a high point, not a one-time occurrence. It is a continuous commitment to refining, calibrating, and fine-tuning an incremental but intentional passion. We did not succeed in all our ventures, but we developed the muscle memory required for mastery. And that is a capacity to stretch, to go beyond the short term and focus on the long term and be open to opportunities outside our immediate frame of reference. Cobra was an example or an, of an idea born from a trip to Vietnam, which in, a, in, in essence is like extending our space for ideas outside their offices and factories and into the world. When you constantly observe, ask questions, test ideas, bring ideas from the outside, you make a conscious effort to engage in new environments. You are practicing mastery, and that is distinctly different from just achieving success. So this leads to my final point, which is about mentorship. Mentorship is a lifelong process. And as such, life doesn't give us just one mentor. Over our lifetime, we will come across several people who will impact us, impact our lives, and teach us what we need to learn at specific junctures in our lives. And in my opinion, the most challenging mentorship experience is the one we have with life itself. During this pandemic, for example, life has been testing us on how well we have learned resilience or how connected we are to the things that matter the most. And most of the time, life's lessons gives us lessons that we don't want to learn because it is too painful. It is too painful to know about them or to experience them. But when we choose courage over comfort, we come out on the other side, stronger and braver, and perhaps much better than we had ever imagined, and wiser than we could ever have hoped to be. So to our young marketeers with us today, I leave you with this quote. If you are playing to win, all of life is an obstacle. If you are playing to grow, all of life is an ally. Thank you and good evening. Thank you.